This is K1DBC. All stations, please stand by. The DRC Learning Net will start in five minutes. This is K1DBC. The DRC Learning Net will start in one minute. All stations, please stand by while the repeaters are placed into net mode. W0TX, repeater. PL off. Hello and welcome. This is Kilo One Delta Bravo Charlie. My name is Darone. I am net control for the Denver Radio Club Learning Net tonight. <clears throat> this is a directed net for the purpose of connecting amateurs seeking help or advice with Elmer's willing to mentor. 
This net meets every Wednesday except the third Wednesday of the month at 19.30 hours, 7.30 p.m. Mountain Time on WZRTX repeater with frequency 145.490, which is linked with 448.625. Both have a negative offset of 600 hertz, which means you transmit 600 hertz below 145.490 or 448.625. They also normally have a PL tone of 100 hertz. This net can be broken at any time for emergency or priority traffic by using the word break. Is there any emergency or priority traffic at this time? For recognition by net control, please use your call sign. Everyone is welcome to join in. This is an on-air meeting for amateurs seeking help and Elmers giving their time to mentor. If you have any questions for the Learning Net and don't yet have your license or otherwise wish to contact the Net, you may do so via email at drclearningnet at gmail.com. We also are on groups.io under the name of Ham Learning Net, and we're also on YouTube. Uh, you can search for W0TX on YouTube, uh, DRC, or uh, my channel, WEREGR8, and you can find a live stream. Uh, going right now, as well as past uh, stream nets. We will begin by inviting Elmers only to check in with or without traffic. All Elmers, please check in now. Alpha, Alpha Zero, Juliet Kilo, AA Zero, JK, good evening. All right, Net Control wishes to thank and acknowledge the following Elmer, AA0JK. Fred, thank you for checking in. One more time, anyone else who'd like to check in as an Elmer, a subject matter expert, um, please call now. Okay, uh, general check-ins to the Net will be taken in alphabetical groups based on the first letter of the suffix of the operator's call sign. That would be the first letter after the number in your call sign. Please try to use ITU phonetics as you can as you check in and indicate if you have traffic or question for our Elmers as you do. If your suffix begins with the letters A through M, alpha through Mike, please check in now. Kilo Zero Echo Hotel Romeo Mark in Littleton and I do have a question. Kilo Sierra Zero Echo K S November Zero Echo Yankee Zulu, Jim and Littleton with a question. Kilo 6 Hotel Juliet Victor, K6HJV, Tom Arvada, no traffic. Alpha Fox Zero Echo, Alex Brumfield. Kilo Zero, Lima, Alpha, India, K Zero, LEI, Larry, Lakewood. Kilo, Foxtrot, Quebec, Alpha. Kilo Zero, Kilo, Papa, Sierra, Kevin, Lakewood, no traffic. Okay, we'll hold up there for just a moment. All right, this is K1DBC Net Control. I think that last sound we heard was an APRS uh, beacon, I believe. Uh, so <clears throat> if you have your radio tuned up um, or anything else tuned up, just make sure it's maybe not uh, transmitting on the active channel. Um, no worries, though. Uh, I'd like to welcome and acknowledge the following check-ins. Um, K0EHR, Mark with traffic. 
KS0E Alex. Uh, haven't heard you in a while. Welcome, welcome back. Um, and zero EYZ Jim uh, with a question. Uh, or no, I think that was it was it was there Alex or Jim that had a question. Sorry about that. And um, K six HDV Tom AF zero E Alex K zero L A I Larry K F zero A F Q Troy I believe it was and K zero K P S Kevin. Any corrections or any other follow ups on on those uh, check ins? Go ahead. Okay, anyone else? Alpha through Mike, A through M, and you'd like to check into the Denver Radio Club Ham Learning Net. Your suffix begins with those letters. Uh, please call now. All right, this is K1DBC Net Control for the Denver Radio Club Ham Learning Net. We'll go ahead and open up the whole alphabet. If you'd like to check into the Denver Radio Club Ham Learning Net, uh, please do so with your call sign um, and let us know if, your name and let us know if you have any traffic or questions. Uh, please call now. Kilo Zero, Yankee Echo Sierra, Ken in Broomfield, no traffic. November zero, Tango Romeo Papa, Jim in Lakewood. Good evening. All right, that time we had uh, K0YES Ken and then 0TRP Jim. Uh, welcome to the net. Another call. Uh, if you'd like to check into the Denver Radio Club Ham Learning Net, just for the count, or if you have any questions or anything, uh, please call now. Kilo Echo Zero, Sierra Uniform Mike, Jonathan, Lakewood, no traffic. No traffic. W zero T X repeater. All right, this is K1DBC Net Control. Uh, that time we had uh, KE0SUM, Jonathan. I believe there was a double in there, and then there was WD0CIV, uh, Charles. Uh, if you had checked in and I didn't call your call sign, uh, go ahead and try once more. Kilo Foxtrot Zero, Bravo Alpha Kilo, David Lakewood, no traffic. Zero, Delta, Victor, Lima, uh, Craig in Stonegate Parker, no traffic. All right, perfect. We had uh, KF0BAK David and W0DVL uh, Craig. Thank you for checking in. One more call at the moment. If you'd like to check into the Denver Radio Club Ham Learning Net or if you need any corrections on your call sign, uh, please call now. We're taking all calls. Kilo Fox Trot Zero Alpha Whiskey Charlie. Brian, no traffic.
All right, perfect. We had uh, Nick Control. Like to welcome knowledge of the following check-in. KF0 AWC Brian. Thank you for checking in. Uh, there'll be a few more opportunities throughout the net to uh, check in uh, if you didn't uh, get get it in at the moment. Um, let's go ahead and throw it over to K0 EHR Mark with uh, traffic. The net is yours. Go ahead. Yeah, so I have a question around um, the counterpoise. I know we've discussed this in the past. Um, my setup here, I've got a, uh, an ICOM IC7300 uh, connected to a 203-foot uh, uh, random wire in-fed antenna through a uh, portal one onion. And I've been experimenting with the different counterpoises, you know, trying to just, I've got it pretty well dialed in. I've had like over 500 QSOs and 38 countries with FT8. Uh, but I'm trying to get some long-distance SSB action going on now. And I finally had my first one the other day with Brazil, uh, which was pretty awesome, 590 to Brazil, 100 watts. But anyway, um, what I'm trying to figure out, so I have right now a single counterpoise, and I read someplace that you should make your counterpoise about a quarter of the wavelength of the longest wave you want to communicate on, which I'm looking for 80 meters. So I cut a 20-meter counterpoise, strung that off for my onion uh, just it's about six feet along my fence and um, what I've discovered is that whether I use it or not it's pretty the difference is pretty negligible except for on the 20 meter band so I haven't experimented with different links yet but I'm wondering if anyone else out there has any experience with that uh, is it because it's kept cut for 20 meters or is that just a coincidence this is K0EHR next net Okay, uh, great question there. Uh, it sounded like um, ultimately you're trying to figure out the, um, the kind of the length of it, and uh, it sounds like you were you were thinking uh, it's a quarter wavelength of the longest wave, uh, and you're and you're doing a 20 meter uh, counterpoise, and it doesn't seem to be it it seems fairly neg negligible. I, I don't know too much about that, uh, Fred, or, or anyone else who uh, knows on that. Uh, please call now. AA zero JK, uh, where'd you come up with the 200 some plus uh, feet for your uh, uh, good question. Um, it was, that's one of those links that is not resonant on any of the bands that I want to run, uh, which would be 160 all the way down to 6. So, um, yeah, I just happened to uh, be that that would fit with my uh, my yard and whatnot in, in a non-resonant link. Okay. Uh, uh, interesting, but... Uh, uh, I've never worked uh, or strived to work uh, 160 before, so at the moment it doesn't, uh, uh, the exact uh, resonant length for that band does not uh, uh, resonate with me at the moment, <laughs> uh, but uh, uh, that is not uncommon for uh, 20 not to load up on uh, uh, various uh, multi-band uh, antennas, uh, especially the long wires like that. Uh, your counterpoise, definitely you want your counterpoise uh, to be uh, at least quarter quarter wavelength of the band that you, uh, the lowest frequency in the band that you want to use. And uh, uh, you, you probably really put in that uh, antenna tuner or that uh, matchbox uh, to its maximum here, <laughs> trying to get that to uh, resonate. I, w I would highly recommend that uh, you, you take a look at uh, some other uh, antenna combination there uh, if you want to work all bands. Um, but uh, you might just want to string up a separate 20-meter antenna. Yes, K0 HR. Yeah, actually, surprisingly, um, 20 is, is good. Uh, it's whether I use a counterpoise or not, but the difference is on an entire SWR unit when I use the counterpoise and whether I don't. The other bands, it doesn't seem to matter very much. It's like, you know, maybe 0.3, 0.4 difference. Um, so that was just really the question. It's not, in, in, and interestingly enough, at the 203 foot length, I have really good SWR on every band except for 160. Um, the worst is um, is 80, 
I get 2.8, which my tuner can easily accommodate. And the rest of the bands are definitely in the ones or in the low twos. So I'm very pleased with the performance, the intent. I was just curious about the counterpoise. And also, I've heard some people run multiple lengths of counterpoise. So I'm just curious if anybody has had any experience with that. Back to Ned. Uh, that's correct, uh, multiple length uh, counterpoises, but uh, your, an that, uh, your antenna tuner does not, I repeat, it does not tune an antenna. Uh, it merely compensates for the mismatch and your uh, in-feed uh, uh, wire, your, your in-feed uh, to the to the antenna, so uh, that SWR doesn't have anything to do with your antenna. It's just compensating for the mismatch for your feed line into the antenna. So uh, if you really want to find out how efficient your ant antenna is, uh, get a short section of coax and uh, and and a analyzer and hook it up to your uh, wire, your end feed wire there, and uh, you will see just how far out uh, of resonance that uh, piece of wire is. But uh, that is your, the antenna does analyzer or matchbox or, or antenna tuner does not uh, tune the antenna. Uh, it just compensates for the mismatch. So just out of curiosity, what was that, uh, uh, SWR at uh, uh, 20 meters. W zero T X repeater. So what I'm using to measure the SWR is a nano VNA uh, connected at the radio end uh, directly into the feed point, and uh, at 20 meters, I'm seeing about 1.4 SWR at that point. Yeah, that's the nano VNA connected right into the coax going out. Okay. Uh, could you repeat again uh, the length of that uh, wire? Sure, 203 feet. Okay, I'm going to have to do a little research on that. But uh, uh, you shouldn't really actually go beyond a uh, uh, half wavelength on the length of your wire for the bands that you uh, are planning on using. So I'm going to have to look up and see what uh, this is. Is that uh, half wavelength for uh, 160? That's a good question. I'll have to do the math on that. I use that length because I, I bought the antenna from uh, Palomar Engineers and uh, the other ones that made the uh, done in and whatnot, and, and that's on their chart of uh, recommended lengths for uh, uh, they claim from 160 down to six, but you know, like you said, 160 is just uh, it's just not working. It's uh, uh, just there's so much uh, noise floor that I can't hear anything on 160. But it's performing really well from 80 all the way down to six. Okay, if you bought that for Palomar, it's, uh, you should be okay there, and uh, uh, gonna have to keep us posted <laughs> on uh, your activities there with that ant antenna. I'm, in I'm inter interested there. But uh, very good. I'm glad you checked in and uh, uh, gives me a little bit of homework here. AA0JK, back to net control. All right, sounds good. Uh, this is K1DBC net control. Uh, great conversation there. Yeah, this is... Uh Pretty heady stuff for me. I, I still, un unfortunately, have not dive too much into uh, to antenna design and theory, and there's just yeah, there's so much into it, and uh, yeah, it's it's really cool topic. So um, yeah, uh, very very cool. That sounds like a lot of fun, a lot of uh, a lot of math and uh, science, and uh, just kind of uh, trialing and, and testing and, and and going along. So uh, very very cool. Anything else on that, um, Mark or Fred or anyone else on the net? Uh, please call now. TRP with a question. Yeah, N zero TRP. Go ahead. Yeah, this N uh, zero TRP with a question for Mark. Uh, Mark, I'm just curious about the wire and how you kind of have it strung uh, around your lot. First of all, is it an insulated wire? And then secondly, is this uh, like strung around over your house? Or, or I think I remember hearing a few weeks ago that it, you may have shot this one up through the trees or something. That you could just kind of 
give us a brief description of kind of how you uh, strung the wire and how you modified it to uh, get it to work uh, in zero TRP. Yeah, K zero EHR. Uh, yeah, happy to. So it's um, the the wire itself is 13 gauge. They call it poly sheath twisted copper. It's supposed to be you know, like one of the best types of wire you can use for you know, running through trees and whatnot. And it's supposed to be squirrel resistant. We'll see how that one works out. Um, yeah, and when I first put that up there, I started out at uh, 71 feet, and I just had it running across my roof, and it worked out okay. Um, but then, yeah, as you heard a few weeks back, uh, I got one of those antenna boss launchers, and, and so now it's running up uh, from the unun. It goes pretty much straight up to the top of, of my blue spruce tree, about 40, 45 feet, and then it goes across the top of my house again at 40 feet, across my lot to the very back of my lot uh, through a. Uh, I have a, an ash tree back there, and uh, so then it comes down from there, and then I have it attached to my fence. So I've got insulators on both ends, and I added springs to uh, give a little bit of, uh, of uh, give for the tr movement of the trees. So, yeah, so most of it, probably a good 100 feet of it, maybe 120 feet of it, or is um, horizontal at about 40 feet elevation. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Uh, appreciate it. N0 TRP back to net. All right, sounds good. N0 TRP, uh, good question there. And uh, thanks again for the follow-up there, uh, K0 EHR Mark. Anyone else? While we're on the subject of uh, of uh, building your antenna, uh, antenna and uh, measurement, uh, anything else? Any other questions uh, for Mark or, or anything else you'd like to bring up on that topic? Please call now. SUM, uh, yeah, a question. Yeah, KE0SUM, Jonathan, go ahead. Actually, Mark, um, I just purchased a nano VNA and uh, just started tuning some antennas. I was curious how you liked yours, if you had any tips or uh, tricks. I think that's still on topic, Drone. Okay, you zero issue. I'm back to net. Sure, K0 issue. I'm K0 EHR. Um, yeah, I like it a lot. Uh, you know, for the money, you can't beat it. Um, you know, what I found, though, is that um, the, the best thing to do is to use the... Um, they call it the VNA Saver, the software uh, that you can get for it, which is free. Yeah, Nano VNA Saver. And what that does is basically you don't have to fool around with the touch screen and the little itty bitty controls that are on it. You just plug it into your USB port. And then uh, the Saver does everything from calibration to running the sweeps and generating graphs and all that. And plus, you can um, use your mouse to uh, look at the different points on the graph, and it'll tell you what the SWR is at, at each and every point, which is great. And then you can also save the graphs and, and uh, save your calibration data and so on. So I would definitely recommend you do that. But, uh, yeah, I'm very happy with it. And it's great because it's really super fast to do a sweep. And so I can go out there and, and tweak my counterpoise or whatever I want to do and then just run back down and run another sweep and do an, almost an instant comparison. Uh, Mark, uh, thank you. It does help. It answered uh, one of my questions I hadn't really gotten into saver at this point and that sounds like a great way to go and you said it also takes care of calibration so uh, thanks for the information all right sounds good yeah absolutely uh ke0sum and uh uh K0 uh, EHR Mark, uh, thanks for the follow-up there on uh, the Nano VNA and the, the Nano VNA Saver uh, PC software. It's uh, for, for Windows and Mac and Linux, so you can get it for, for all flavors. And yeah, very, very helpful software, so you don't have to mess around on that little uh, little screen there. So um, anyone else on uh, yeah on uh, Nano VNAs, antennas, uh, anything else you want to you bring up? Or uh, I guess at this point, any other check-ins? or questions or anything else for the net? Anyone else wants to bring up? Go ahead. Kilo Echo Zero, November Romeo Echo, Jim in Littleton. No traffic. November Zero Echo Yankee Zulu, Jim in Littleton also, with a question. All right, yeah, absolutely. Um, 
uh, Echo Yankee Zulu. Sorry about that. Yeah, and uh, K um, K E zero N R E Jim got you checked in. Um, Echo Yankee Zulu, uh, Jim, uh, go ahead. Yeah, thanks, Jerome. I asked this question a couple of months ago, but maybe I phrased it wrong. I have a long, narrow space where I'm putting up a multi-van vertical where I'm taking it down and cleaning it up and tuning it up after 15 years. But what I want to know is anybody know for sure uh, if the orientation of your radials and mine will be facing mostly north and south, does that impact your uh, propagation uh, profile, uh, like on uh, oh, one of these, uh, oh, you know, one of these programs that projects that sort of thing? Does that have any, any effect at all? Does anybody have any experience in that? I got some opinions last time, but uh, I just want to know if anybody really knows if it makes a difference. AA0JK. Yeah, AA0JK. Fred, go ahead. Yeah, all those elements like that are going to uh, affect, uh, affect your radiation pattern. But, uh, you know, uh, looking at uh, some of the charts and whatnot out there, you know, they're all relating to a perfect world, which we do not live in. We do not live in. Uh, just be concerned with uh, getting your, your radio, radials out wherever that uh, you may have room for. And uh, uh, as, as long as it's, uh, everything is resonant, uh, you're pretty much good. Uh, I wouldn't worry too much about it. Just do the best that you can. But yes, uh, any any different configuration is going to check the ra uh, affect the radiation pattern. Uh, close nearby objects, trees, the ground, everything affects the radiation pattern. So uh, do the best you can and enjoy the contacts. Back to net control. AA zero JK. This is zero UIZ, thanks. So just put as much wire in the ground as you can, huh? At least, at least uh, a, a couple of quarter wavelengths uh, for each band that uh, you're going to be operating on uh, at, at minimum. But, uh, you know, I'm just talking about a minimum. They, they say the more the merrier, but, uh, you know, we're limited by... Uh, uh, the area that we have to work with. AA zero JK. Uh, thanks for that, N zero E Y Z. This is uh, Jim N zero E Y Z. Uh, I got a friend and uh, he uh, put down a new driveway and he just tied his uh, antenna into the mesh under the concrete. And he seems to be doing pretty good with that. One heck of a ground. Okay, well, I'm going to lay it out about 500 feet of 14-gauge uh, uh, bare copper wire, stranded copper wire for a start. Thanks a lot. Uh, make those radials... Uh at least a quarter wavelength for the bands, each one of the bands that you plan on using. Uh, I, I don't know that just one like that, extending that like that, is going to add to the performance of your antenna. Uh, try, try to get uh, uh, a minimum of uh, uh, separate wires for each band, quarter wavelength uh, for each band. Okay, thank you, and zero was it. Be clear. Thank you, Jerome, for running the net tonight. Perfect. Sounds good. N0EYZ uh, and uh, A0JK, thanks again for the follow-up on that. Yeah, I haven't uh, done too much on on uh, these types of antennas like that, where uh, a lot of it uh, is, is below the ground with the radials there, so um, that, that's quite interesting. Um, 
yeah, hopefully that uh, hopefully that uh, helped you there a little bit more. Anyone else on that, or any other follow up on that, uh, Jim? Or or again, anyone else? Uh, please call now. All right, sounds good. I'll go ahead and just take this opportunity to take uh, further check-ins if you just tuned in. Uh, my name is Darone. My call sign is Kilo One Delta Bravo Charlie. I'm net control for the Denver Radio Club of Ham Learning. That it's an on-air meeting for amateurs seeking help, and Elmer's giving their time to help us. Everyone is welcome to join in. If you wish to check in at this time, please do so with your call sign using IT Phonetics, your name and state if you have traffic or questions for the net. Please call now. Kilo Alpha Zero, Charlie Romeo, November Oscar. With a question, I'm not sure the scope of this net because I just joined. This is KA Zero R and O. The name is Dan Delta Alpha November. This is the cool thing about on YouTube. Now we can try to hear what they said here real quick. It's K1DBC. Give me uh, just a moment here. Kilo Alpha Zero, Charlie Romeo, November Oscar. With a question. Okay, didn't catch it. All right, this is K1DBC in control. We had a few check-ins there. Um, KF0, Bravo, Uniform, Uniform, Bruce. And then there was a double. I thought I heard uh, Foxtrot, Charlie, Charlie, uh, but I didn't get the full call sign. And then I had uh, Kilo Alpha Zero, R uh, Romeo, November, Oscar, I believe it was, Dan. Uh, let's just start with uh, the FCC call sign. Or the, if, if I didn't call your full call sign, go ahead. Perfect. All right, this is K1 DBC Net Control. I got uh, Whiskey Zero Foxtrot Foxtrot Charlie uh, Jerry gotcha checked in, and then I believe it was uh, uh, K A Zero R N O Dan. Uh, is that correct on the call sign or any other? I, I believe you had uh, uh, traffic as well. Uh, go ahead. Uh, that is correct. I will await uh, your call on the traffic. Kilo Alpha Zero Charlie Romeo November Perfect. Sounds good. That'll be momentarily. Uh, one more call. If you'd like to check into the Denver Radio Club Ham Learning at, at the moment, uh, please do so with your call sign, your name, and let us know if you have any traffic or questions uh, for the net. Please call now. Question, Jerome. Did we have a NRE, a K0 NRE? Uh, yes, I apologize. Uh, we also had uh, KE0NRE. Jim, I apologize about that. I, I had somehow missed that. Uh, got you checked in as well. Uh, one more call. Uh, anyone else like to check in at the moment? Denver Radio Club Ham Learning Net, please call now. All right, with that, uh, Dan, KA0RNO, uh, the net is yours. Go ahead. Okay, I'm not uh, sure of the scope of this, but I heard uh, ham learning. I've had my license since 1984. I used it in 1984 and haven't used it since. <laughs> so uh, I'm really a novice, even though I'm a general class. My question is, I built a J-pole for two meters 
to exact specifications, and my rubber duck works better than uh, J-Pole. I, I have no idea what's wrong. I keep checking my measurements, and everything seems right, and uh, I'm using the right coax and everything. Uh, I have no idea why it's not working almost at all. All right. Uh, well, welcome back into the sport, the hobby, um, back into the fold. That's awesome. Um, quite a few years. But, um, yeah, nowadays um, there was a, a, a product that was mentioned earlier on in that called the Nano VNA. It's a vector network analyzer. And uh, for about $60, you can buy a, a tool that will let you measure um, your your antenna and get some really kind of good stats on it and understand really what it's doing and, and, and whatnot. So, and the SWR that it's giving, uh, that's, that's one suggestion is it's, it's pretty cheap to, to, to buy some, um, some tools nowadays that can really show you what, what your antenna is doing. Um, if, if you built it to spec, uh, but, but I wonder if, uh, what, uh, what kind of measurements you've been doing or, 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 uh, or, or, or what you're seeing, uh, anything further on that, go ahead. Okay, my uh, SWR is reading um, about a 1.2 on 5 watts and uh, less, less than that on uh, low power. And, uh, hey man, hang on, I'm uh, paying attention to traffic here, I'm driving. Um, and that's about all I've got to go on. And the measurements of the uh, antenna I could give to you if you want to know, but... I've, I've cross-referenced it with many websites, and it seems like it's right on. Question. Gotcha. Sounds good. Yeah, definitely be careful on the road there. Yeah, I haven't done too much in building, uh, antenna building myself. So, yeah, AE0JK. Fred, go ahead. How do you have it mounted? Uh, where, where do you have it uh, mounted? Uh, outside, inside? Uh, how, how's the uh, area where you go have it mounted? Okay, I've got a uh, umbrella holder in the bed of my pickup truck. I've got it mounted on a, um, a painting pole as high as it'll go, and a wooden stick that uh, I've wrapped um, duct tape around for the final, you know, few feet. And um, and it's away from buildings and everything. And like I said, I do better with a rubber duck than I do with it. Well, this is an interesting one. <laughs> I'd have to take a look at your uh, installation there. But if you've got it uh, uh, fabricated uh, to the numbers, you, sh you should be uh, getting some pretty good performance out of it. Uh, uh, the next thing I'd be looking at would be your uh, uh, feed, line, feed line to it and making sure that uh, the surrounding area that it is mounted, nothing is conductive. If you've got anything in uh, the immediate area close to the antenna, uh, it'll detune it. So uh, right at the moment, that's the only uh, things that I can think of to uh, possibly look for. Back to net control, AE0JK. Well, I, um, I actually tried it with a one-foot piece of coax to the connecting point which is a couple inches up from the bottom of the J. And um, I've soldered all the connections, and I remeasure everything, and everything looks good. It's copper, um, 50 ohm uh, coax. Um, I just thought maybe, it, does it work with repeaters? Maybe it's only simplex. No, 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 no. Uh, it's going to be resonant uh, for anything there that, uh, in, within that band. Uh, that it's designed for. Uh, I, I would actually look for something possibly in the area that might be detuning it. Uh, uh, but uh, like I said earlier, I'd have to actually take a look at it to uh, actually make any further comments. But if you may build it to the numbers it, and it's uh, clear of uh, any, any obstructions, should work just fine. So this is a curious one. Keep us posted. AA0JK. Okay, I'm going to be clear after this final comment. Fight at a different location completely and see if that makes a difference. And um, you know, maybe look at one of those uh, analyzers. I thought they were a lot more than 60 bucks. 
So thanks for the advice from everyone. Back to net control. I'll be cleared. K-A-0-R-N-O. All right, sounds good, K-A-0-R-N-O. Yeah, uh, would like to hear how that uh, turns out. Yeah, don't hesitate to uh, check in any further uh, nets in the uh, uh, club activity and let us know. Um, uh, yeah, I, I don't have too much uh, on that. Uh, yeah, but those, those uh, analyzers are, are pretty cheap. Um, it's not something, I don't know if you can actually buy them at um, Ham Radio. I thought you might be able to, but not for the price you could buy them online for, for, that, for that $60. So uh, yeah, those come with uh, SMA, uh, connectors, um, and then uh, you can break them out into to UHF and, and, and uh, test uh, test away. So, uh, anyone else on that, or or anyone else on anything else you'd like to bring up to the net? Uh, please call now. Taser EHR. Yeah, EHR. Mark, go ahead. Yeah, I just had a quick comment. I've got a J pole. Um, I didn't build it myself. I went the the easy route and bought it from. Uh, I think it's K9 VBR. It was like thirty bucks, so I figured I'd just buy it, but. For what it's worth, I've just got it up on my roof um, attached to a piece of PVC. So, I mean, it clears the roof by only a few feet. Um, and I'm talking through it right now. Uh, I've hit repeaters. I'm in Littleton. I've hit repeaters as far away as Pikes Peak. Um, I've done simplex on it probably a good 40 miles. So it works for both repeaters and simplex. So uh, as far as the actual antenna design or whatever, I'm, I couldn't be happier with it for what it's worth. Kaser EHR, back to net. Perfect. Yeah, there's some pretty good uh, pre-built uh, um, J-pole antennas we've, we've discussed before. So, uh, but that's definitely another uh, another route to go to, and uh, it sounds like uh, you got uh, good results there too. So, uh, very very cool. Thank uh, thanks for the follow up there. TRP with a question. Yeah, N zero T R P. Uh, Jim, or uh, yeah, go ahead. N zero T R P with a question for Fred here. Fred, you mentioned that uh, you need not have any other metal uh, near. I'm just curious. I want to uh, put a ground plane up on my chimney, but I've also got a metal chimney cap that is, uh, the chimney's relined with a uh, metal uh, uh, flue. So just uh, curious, how far away from the chimney cap does that ground plane need to be is, you know, four feet above it or four feet aside of it enough okay you're not talking about the antenna itself I take it uh, you're talking about counterpoise no I'm talking about uh, something like the diamond x50 that uh, I would mount uh, up above the chimney and uh, offset to the side a little bit. Yeah, just make sure, you know, it's as far away as you can, is reasonable, and uh, you don't want it making, uh, coming in contact with it. But there are limitations there, the way you've got it mounted and the, the clearance from that. Uh, as long as it's not making contact uh, with it, uh, uh, I, uh, just a chimney cap. Uh, it's going to have some effect, but not, not uh, enough to be uh, worried about. Just uh, go ahead and uh, uh, run the RF up the coax. Okay, thank you. N0 TRP back to net. N zero TRP, good question there, and uh, uh, good follow up there, uh, Fred A zero JK. Thanks for that. Okay, this is K one DBC net control for the Denver Radio Club Ham Learning Net. Uh, does anyone else have any other comments, questions, check-ins, anything else you'd like to bring up for the net? Or if I missed something and uh, you'd like to bring it up or, uh, or go back to, uh, please call now.
All right, one more time. This is K1DBC Net Control for the Denver Radio Club Ham Learning Net. Uh, I have a few things I can uh, pass uh, traffic-wise. Uh, otherwise, if at the moment, if anyone else has any other tra traffic comments, questions, anything uh, for the net, you'd like to bring up, please call now. W0TX, repeater. Uh, SUM, comment. Yeah, SUM, go ahead. I, I really hope he gets back with us on the issue with the J-Pole. Because if you've got a low SWR, but he says it doesn't get out, um, it's very curious. At first I thought maybe it was tuned off frequency, but that just doesn't make sense. He, he did it to spec, so uh, it's uh, curious uh, why he, it doesn't work for him. So I hope he gets back with all, everybody. Okay, you zero issue him back to that. All right, uh, SUM, uh, KE0, SUM, Jonathan. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, hopefully uh, we hear further on that because that's uh, it's kind of a mystery there. Uh, low SWR, seems like it should be able to get out and uh, seeing better with uh, rubber ducks, so kind of interesting, yeah. All right, sounds good, yeah. Uh, Anyone else on that or anything else you'd like to bring up for the net at the moment? Uh, please call now. Okay, this is K1DBC Net Control uh, for the Denver Radio Club Ham Learning. I can go ahead and pass a few things, and we can uh, jump back in and see if anyone else has uh, anything further. Um, over on arrl.org forward slash news, um, article about solar physicist uh, predicts a slightly better solar cycle uh, for 25. Um, Life uh, Leif uh, Svalgard of uh, WW uh, Hansen Experimental Physics Laboratory at Stanford has predicted a maximum sunspot number of a number, 128 uh, plus or minus 10, uh, slightly better than solar cycle 5. Overall average is 132 plus or minus 47, meaning it's 124. None of these numbers are substantially different, so one could perhaps just go with the wisdom of the crowd. All predictions that we consider have the underlying assumption that the sun has not changed its behaviors. Uh, its spots, so to speak, on a time scale of a few centuries. The Maunder minimum may be a possible violation of that assumption, and that there will be no such changes in the near future, in spite of speculative suggestions. Uh, those included uh, one of his own in 2013. Uh, Svalgard characterized the science of solar cycle prediction to, to be still in its infancy, borne out by the extreme range of predictions of cycle 25. More info on that on ARRL.org. AA0JK. Yeah, AA0JK. Fred, go ahead. Yeah, just to fill some dead air time here. <laughs> the ARRL has come out with their uh, latest uh, edition of on the air and uh, they've got quite a few uh, topics here that might uh, be of interest here to everyone got an article on uh, power supplies things to consider when uh, getting a power supply for your your HF uh, station uh, installing a mobile radio in your vehicle uh, one here for tuning sideband signals soldering uh, PL 239 connectors and coax connectors, some tips. Uh, they've got a, a learning network with it have some very interesting uh, uh, videos that are associated with that. And they keep coming out with uh, new ones periodically. And uh, got an article here on public service and, and emergency communications. Uh, let's see, what else have we got? I guess that uh, are the highlights, but uh, if any of those topics are of interest to you, you might look into uh, uh, reading this uh, latest copy of uh, On the Air from ARRL. 
AA zero JK back to net control. All right, sounds good. AA zero JK. Uh, this is K one DBC. Yeah, the um, on the air. Uh, magazine uh, by by ARL, if you are a member, um, uh, you have access to that. I, I I don't I can't remember if you actually have to be a member or not for this uh, magazine at the moment, but uh, pretty good pretty good um, articles there um, in this month's uh, last month's uh, magazine. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, K1DBC net control. Uh, yeah, it looks like you do have to be a uh, member to read um, that magazine, but uh, you can see some sample issues um, on uh, arl.org forward slash on dash the dash air dash magazine. All right, this is K1DBC net control. Um, another piece of uh, news here over from uh, arl.org forward slash news uh, a uh, British uh, amateur radio operator um, we've spoken about before Scott Tilly uh, Victor Edward 7 uh, Tango Ingo Indigo Lima VE7 TIL um, he has received a signal from the NASA Mars Reconnaissance, uh, Reconnaissance, Reconnaissance Orbiter MRO flying just 274 kilometers or 170 miles above the red planet's surface. Signal was an X-band carrier containing no data or telemetry. Its purpose is to allow for Doppler tracking, Tilly explained. The rapid change in pitch of the signal is caused by the relative motion of the satellite and the observer. He used a homemade satellite dish to hear the orbiter. Um, uh, Tilly enjoys tracking down signals from dead satellites, zombie satellites, and spy satellites, but the MRO was a first for him. Uh, the si signal is weak, but it is one of the louder signals in Mars orbit. He said the spacecraft has a large dish antenna it uses as a relay for other mi Mars missions. With the, with the proximity of Mars these days, it was perfect to try. Uh, perfect time to try, absolutely. Uh, 2018, Tilly saw the signature of the uh, imager for the magneto magnetopause to Aurora, uh, global uh, exploration, uh, the image um, uh, satellite. Um, uh, NASA spacecraft believed to have died in 2005. Um, so, pretty pretty neat uh, news there. A lot of uh, citizen science, amateur science, not even any transmitting there, just receiving. So, very, very neat. All right, this is K1DBC Net Control for the Denver Radio Club Ham Learning. Uh, don't hesitate to jump in if you have any questions or anything. I have a few more things here, uh, but I'll drop uh, once more. Uh, K1DBC Net Control. This is KA0RNO again. Am I allowed a, a second quick question? Of course, not a problem. Please go ahead. Okay, I was uh, looking into the automatic packet reporting system and with its digipeters and everything like that. My question is, can you operate that without the internet? All right, K1DBC um, net control. That's a good question. APRS, uh, is internet required for digipeting? I don't no, I, I think there's probably some offline, completely offline uh, part of it where it's RF only, but I, I do believe DigiPeters get hooked up to the internet. I'm, I might be incorrect about that, but uh, anyone else on that uh, know more about uh, APRS reporting? I know from your radio, it, you can just, it'll beacon out to any any um, repeater or, or uh, excuse me, a uh, DigiPeter, but I, I believe that that DigiPeter then, at least to be able to report on like, on an on an internet enabled site like APRS.fi, I, I guess it would have to be connected to the internet. But uh, there's I'm sure there's offline availability for that as well. Uh, anyone else on that or or um, or, or, uh, uh, or I know, go ahead on that. Any, anything else? Hello. 
LAI. Yeah, K0LAI. Larry, go ahead. K0LAI. In theory, a digipeter only repeats a signal that it received, decrementing the, um, the number of times it can be repeated in the header. And uh, the last one that comes up, once it gets to zero, it, it won't repeat it anymore. Um, some base stations are set up, and they usually end at dash 10 for their, um, they'll be their call sign with a dash 10. Those are usually connected to the internet. There are some digipeters up in the mountains that are not connected to the internet, and what they do is they just, they hear a signal and then they re repeat it again out onto the plains or wherever. So a digipeter does not have to be connected to the internet. But, um, and when I do mobile APRS, I w am not connected to the internet. When I'm trying to collect uh, people in my area, say for a, an event up in the mountains, and then I'll digipeat it out with more power, and that power gets it off out someplace where it can actually connect to the internet. But the whole APRS system does not have to depend on the internet. The internet is only used so everybody can kind of monitor things on a web page, but it's not necessary. Um, and there are ways of using APRS on different frequencies without having to have an internet system. It's K0 LEI back to that. Okay, Arno, uh, hearing what you're saying, um, is, it, is it probable that I could go from Denver to, say, Pueblo or, or further south? Uh, because as I've been reading about it, it kind of stops after two digipeters and it won't go anymore. Uh, or my, I guess I just don't understand how far it will go in a local area without Internet. Okay, that's based on the settings for how much it's supposed to repeat. That's uh, known as the wide parameter, and um, that is a normal situation. Normally, you wouldn't want to repeat in a busy area more than two times. Um, more than that, you're going to start going off into other states, and that is the recommended by the inventor of APRS. He recommends the is what's kind of like a wide one, two, or something like that is the setting. And that, that is on purpose. It's not to go too far. Um, now, he does say there are exceptions, like if you're in an area where, where the number of digipeters and bases that can, or I should say, um, internet gateways, where the gateways are, are uh, very sparse and the digipeters are sparse, then you might increase your number of hops in hopes that it will get someplace. Um, I've driven in areas where there's no digipeters, like uh, through Nebraska or through Minnesota, and um, in those cases you can increase it and it does work. And of course there's also HF, a HF APRS where you're not supposed to digipeat at all because in theory if you're running on HF APRS you should hit a Internet Gateway someplace um, on North America. This is K0LAI back to net again. Uh, this is KA0RNO for uh, ID. Um, so what I'm, what I'm hearing you say is if you're in an area such as Denver that has a lot of digipeters, uh, it probably won't make it out of the metro area. Is that is, That's kind of the bottom line question. Normally that is true. However, um, there are cases, atmospheric conditions sometimes, like tropospheric ducting. I've seen a VHF APRS signal travel hundreds of miles and get picked up. So it can travel farther. Um, there is an APRS net on Sunday evenings at 7 p.m. And uh, you can find that on the W0TX.org webpage which uh, has a list of Denver nets. And they talk about how far that signals travel. And it's not unusual for signals to travel a long distance. Um, 
from different states into the Colorado area. So it does happen. But under normal circumstances, you know, I only run 10 watts on APRS, and I'm just happy it gets to an Internet gateway so um, that I can go and check it and make sure it worked. And based on the terrain we have around here, even in, uh, along the Front Range, sometimes it's hard even to get a signal to get somewhere uh, because of that. Anyway, uh, K0LEI, back to net again. Okay, I've occupied enough time. Uh, I'm going to go back to net, and I'll be listening. KA0RNO. All right, sounds good. Yeah, uh, APRS is a pretty cool topic. Um, uh, yeah, glad we could get some uh, questions uh, answered there for you, uh, K0RNO. Uh, yeah, uh, K1DDN, um, she's on the... Amanda Alden on the Ham Nation podcast uh, on twit.tv. She actually uh, helps host that APRS net on, on Sunday, so uh, uh, pretty neat to uh, check in there and uh, hear on the air. Um, all right, this is K1DBC Net Control for the Denver Radio Club Ham Learning at uh, We're nearing uh, kind of the end, but uh, if anyone else has any other topics, questions, comments, anything else you'd like to bring up for the net uh, or any other check-ins, please call now. Comment. Yeah, go ahead with the comment. AA0JK, yes, uh, I just wanted to uh, uh, say hello to and welcome Charles, KD0CIV. Charles, it's great uh, to hear you. Uh, I haven't had an opportunity for uh, eyeball QSO uh, at the Hamfest <laughs> here because of circumstances, but uh, good to uh, hear that uh, you are, are putting out the RF there, Charles, and hope to uh, uh, be able to... Uh, uh, chat with you uh, in the near future here just as soon as uh, the old ham fest starts opening up again. So welcome, Charles. Hope to hear you uh, checking in uh, in the future. And also, uh, good evening, Tom, K6HJV. Uh, a note, uh, be uh, looking forward to uh, uh, seeing you on the Sunday morning net. And everyone, uh, we have a great net on Sunday mornings, 10 o'clock, uh, 6 meters, Five three point zero nine zero, and we all get together there for a uh, short uh, uh, net there on Sunday mornings. Uh, so, A zero J K back to net control. Thank you, everyone. A great turnout this evening. All right, perfect. Sounds good. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, welcome to everybody uh, joining the net. Uh, for the first time, or uh, uh, for the first time in a while, uh, welcome back. It's uh, it's great to hear uh, everyone uh, on the air, um, and yeah, we had a great uh, great turnout this evening. Thank you so much all for being here. Uh, let me see if I have anything else. Uh, otherwise, uh, if anyone else has any anything else you'd like to pass this evening, uh, please call now. Yeah, let's check in. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, anyone who'd like to check in, please call now. Uh, go ahead with a late check-in, uh, uh, whoever called that. Yeah, it's Whiskey Delta 6 Delta Oscar Kilo Rich in Arvada. New traffic. Uh, and enjoyed what I've, I've heard. Thanks. Back to that. W-0-T-X. Repeater. All right, perfect. WD0, uh, DOK, Rich, got you checked in, yeah. Uh, anyone else who'd like to check in at the moment? Um, this might be the, uh, the last uh, call for check-ins for this evening. Uh, please call now. Yeah, Doran. It's Whiskey Delta 6, 6, Delta Oscar Kilo. Thank you. All right, this is K1DBC Net Control. A few couple of other things here real quick. Um, we're on uh, hackaday.com. Uh, we are uh, talking about uh, kind of getting into electronics, and um, they, uh, they kind of go into um, 
about how there there used to be uh, more beginners kits and electronics kits out there, and uh, there's there's not too much uh, more. And uh, so somebody's kind of have, has built their own um, open source electronics trainer. So a uh, pretty cool article on on hackaday.com. Uh, microcontroller, a bunch of uh, analog inputs and outputs, uh, supports Raspberry Pi, ESP, Arduino, uh, OLEDs, touchscreens, Bluetooth, uh, tons of things, and a, and a really cool kind of uh, development board and uh, lots of buttons and breadboards and lots of things to play around with there. Uh, Hackaday.com. Uh, search for uh, developing an open source electronics trainer. Uh, let's see, I think I might have one more thing here. Uh, give me just a minute. Uh, oh, again on uh, hackaday.com, uh, sensing, sensing the Earth's wobble in time. Um, so pretty neat article about how uh, different time standards are. Uh, TIA, um, International Atomic uh, Time, UTC and UT1, uh, Universal Time and uh, Coordinated Universal Time, and how these different uh, measurements came to be and kind of different standards and, and how, how, um, how measurements are done. So it's a pretty, pretty interesting article on that there over on uh, hackaday.com. All right, yeah. Uh, with that, there's plenty of things over on uh, hackaday.com, rtl-sdr.com. Plenty of really cool articles there on uh, radio-related things and uh, uh, everything we're talking about and a lot of cool introductions. So uh, plenty to check out. Uh, I think we might start to wrap things up here. This will actually be the final call. Uh, anyone else have any other comments, questions, or anything else for the net you'd like to bring up this evening? Please call now. Okay, with that, I will start to wrap things up here. Again, uh, thank you all for being here this evening. Um, my name is Daron. My call sign is Kilo One Delta Bravo Charlie. Uh, if you wish to contact the Learning Net with topic suggestions or to set a date as active net, net control operator or guest on, or you may do so at any time via email at drclearningnet.com, uh, gmail.com, excuse me. Uh, again, you can visit us on uh, groups.io forward slash g forward slash ham learning net. You can also view this net uh, and uh, previous nets on uh, YouTube if you search for W0TX or if you go over to youtube.com forward slash W-E-R-E-G-R-8. You can find this net, other nets, and uh, some other uh, club info that uh, we got going there. Um, I guess uh, club business here before we completely wrap up. You can find more info on the Denver Radio Club, call sign W0TX on our, um, on our website, w0tx.org. Um, upcoming meeting is going to be October 21st, next Wednesday, um, presented by Karen Rucker, uh, KG5GAK. Um, 7 p.m. is the presentation time, uh, but um, it, and our presentation is going to be on um, 3D printing antennas, uh, so kind of uh, very similar to uh, topics we were speaking about this evening. So, um, but uh, 3D printing aspect for uh, microwave fr frequencies, specific consideration for uh, horn, uh, horn antenna theory uh, and lessons learned. Uh, she's also going to tell us about her involvement in SETI Institute RF uh, hackathon, aiding in the uh, search for in intelligent life. Um, it's going to be online, Google Meet. Uh, everyone is welcome to join that. Uh, licensed or unlicensed, please uh, come and join us. Um, eight or at 6 p.m. there'll be an Elmer session, which is a very uh, similar to this, just Q&A, and that uh, ends around uh, 7. And then at 7 p.m. is the uh, normally scheduled meeting. Uh, so please come check that out. This evening, we had a really good uh, check-in count. Appreciate everyone being here. We had a total of uh, 22 check-ins, and we'd like to thank and appreciate uh, as everyone who participated. We especially appreciate and thank our Elmers. Um, thank you to the Denver Radio Club for allowing us to use their repeaters for this net. We invite you to join us on the regular, on the third Wednesday of the month at 6 p.m. for an Elmer session prior to the regularly scheduled Denver Radio Club meeting at 7 p.m. Uh, that is uh, just as I mentioned there. Um, everyone is welcome. All right, with that, uh, all stations, please stand by while the repeaters are placed into normal mode. P.L.
Control on. All right, this is K1DBC Net Control, 7-3 to all. Uh, thank you all for being here this evening. Again, next week is the meeting, so uh, join us on uh, uh, W0TX.org for, uh, for the link to that. Um, and uh, I am clear. Uh, everyone take care. Great job tonight, Drew. All right, thanks for coming and joining us on the YouTube here. Uh, uh, I am clear. Take care.